Thank you, man. Good All to right. have you. Good to have you. Yeah, how is everything? Good. <laughs> good. Yeah, good. 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 Man, Ashton Kutcher is super tall, eh? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Did you just meet? Uh, I didn't meet because he was like, you know, between many people. But I'm gonna ask you after the call. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Did you? Hey, thanks for the invite. Sorry. Sure, sure, sure. Um, congrats on what you've built. Um, would you would you agree with what Saigon said? Story over data. What's what's more important, story or data? Uh, sorry, story. Well, what's more important for for founder? Saigon just talked about that. Story or data? I mean, story is always at the heart. Well, I think both goes hand to hand because story is what keeps us together and what we believe in. Everything, everything began with a simple belief. Eh? So if you go to the moon, don't go to the supermarket. That was part of the story, the first line of the story. And then story always built on top. And with the data, story even built it further. And now we are building even a better story with the data. So I think it's hand to hand, not either or, man. Um, I mean, some data points. You started 24 months ago. You have now 230 stores, 60 cities, 15 thousand employees yeah. one five zero 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 employees yeah. <laughs> in two years yeah. what was the high what, i mean talk a little bit about the story some highlights how did that happen yeah and i'm proud of all of them so uh, i mean if i name one highlight maybe like there are there were many highlights but if i would say one highlight we were at we were at this uh, factory building. We were all team in a factory building, and I was gonna announce the biggest round that we had. Uh, not the last round, but our first big round. And it was a bit tense, you know, like the environment was tense. We had the first news about the operations and everything. The team w didn't expect what was coming, and uh, I was super sleepless because I was at the notary the day before. I came to this building. And we had the all hands. And in the all hands, especially Nico, our head of riders, super young guy, now is an entrepreneur, but he was super sad, like he was super tense. Man, this is a one hour all hands, 20th minute, I begin crying. I begin crying, and the last 40 minutes, I begin crying and saying, you know, like we, we get this, we became unicorn, we got this money, it's gonna be big, and we give our riders and our operational crew one million as a bonus. We had this all hands. I went out, uh, I, like, I went out to settle a little bit, taking a deep breath, like big sighs and stuff. I look my right side, I see Nico. We saw each other and as you, I get sentimental. So we saw each other, man, we hugged each other so much and we begin laughing, crying, shouting and you know, everything that we had because we like uh, until that point there was like a real war room and everyone was really like fighting so much and that was this release of it and we just promised ourselves two things at th that moment we never lose our goodwill and we will always do our best and keep this tight connection and that was that was my highlight to be honest yeah why did yeah. you was, yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, 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 it's, uh, it's, it's, why, why, did you, why did you kick this all off here in Germany? I mean, you're a German businessman, but you, know, you're, you're, you, you came here a couple of years ago. It's not the um, most natural move to start a business in Germany, one would think. But, why, but you decided to do so. Why did you pick Germany? Man, I love Germany. <laughs> uh, I love Germany, and, and Turkey and Germany has a history also. So, for example, my grandfather was the first employee of Siemens in Istanbul. My aunt is a Betriebswirtschaftslehrer uh, or something professor in Turkey. So we had a school of, like German school of thought. So I came here 10 years ago, nothing happened, couldn't find to do something. And I said in my mind, I'm going to come back and build this business in Germany. So, and I love, it's creative, it's inspiring, a lot of nice people. So the perception from the outside is sometimes a lot better than the perception from the inside, maybe. <laughs> hey, I don't know what's your perception inside, from inside, but from inside, I still have a lot of positives, and I, I have also, I can also say a couple of areas to improve, definitely. Um, w w such as, w w which one are the, what, which are the areas that Germany can improve in? Let me tell you a story, and then you get, you know, get the past. So, 
I came here with, uh, with Rocket Internet. I had a visa tied to Rocket Internet. And then I said, look, man, I can do it myself. Let me begin my thing. But my visa was tied to Rocket Internet. So I wasn't allowed to be an entrepreneur. Problems begin a little bit there, yeah? So you're not allowed to be an entrepreneur because you come with a blue card. Then somehow we managed it, yeah? Lawyers, X, Y, Z. And then I said, OK, I'm in the process. Let me get it going. I found my tech partner. I found 10K from my mom. Uh, I put in the bank. Let's go. Read, let's, let's hire an office building. We, we need a German guarantor, so you cannot have it. OK, we found a German guarantor. We sold it. And then move forward. Our, my tech partner is from Lebanon, I told you in the podcast. So I'm every month sending 1,000 euros for tech partnership to Lebanon. And one day, a private number calls me, very angry woman on the call. And she says, Ich weiß, was du machst. Sie sind alle so, ihr seid alle so, blah, blah. I said, Wow, okay. Uh, kannst du bitte ein bisschen langsamer reden und so? And then, and she, of course, she didn't. Ihr seid alle, alle so, blah. I said, What? I don't understand. I gave Robert the phone. Yeah? Robert is my first employee. He's somewhere here in the front line. Um, Robert answered the phone. I watched Robert. Robert is turning to white. He gets angry, frustrated, and like says, what's happening here? And then there's an argument I didn't understand, upper intermediate German for me. Uh, so I, Robert turned off the phone. I said, Robert, what's happening, man? Like, you look completely white. He said, calm, we're fucked. I said, what do you mean we're fucked? Uh, we are not fucked, actually. Like, we are doing an amazing thing. And he said, the bank, bank called me told that they accuse us for sending money to Lebanon for money laundering or drug dealing or something like that. They advise us to close operations. They advise us to, uh, they, they, my visa process is canceled, entrepreneurship visa. They advise us to go to police. Anyways, they're going to come us on the phone, they say. This is, this is what has happened in the beginning. This is the challenges of building a business in Berlin. But this is also an opportunity, because an immigrant in this place, we don't have B plans. I don't have a B plan. I only have an A plan. An A plan is to survive and make the best out of it. And this is an opportunity for Germany, because I, love, I still tell you that I love Germany, because it's an opportunity for me. So the key question is, how many of these stories are happening? Yeah? There was a Spiegel article, I don't know if you heard it, uh, every second immigrant entrepreneur is having this. I mean, not only immigrant entrepreneurs, also other entrepreneurs also having similar things. But I think this is not nice. Yeah. Um, and if you think about this, if I would have stopped there, you say 15,000. I'm proud of all my people. And if you just make a basic math, is almost one billion yearly salaries that's given back to the. Uh, economy with foreign investment for Germany. So I think this requires a little bit more attention from government. The government should be a bit more proud about what's happening there, you know? Wow, wow, one billion in, in salaries. I mean, like, make the math, yeah? 15,000 yeah. people, yeah. 50K a month on average. Like, if you make the math, it's like maybe not one billion, maybe I made a wrong math, but it's a, what the message here is not the amount of the money. The message is, how beautiful is it for Germany? Like, there's one, there's one guy who is in the most beautiful city in the earth, in my point of view, from Istanbul, looks at Germany, says, creative, inspiring, let me build my business there, stable, comes here, solves the challenges, creates a lot of uh, employment, and this is amazing. I'm, not, I, I'm happy about what we have done, but for the, on the way, there are some challenges that can easily be tackled. And Germany deserves this because it's a creative and inspiring place to build a business. So this is an opportunity. That's, that's what I'm saying. I'm happy otherwise. I mean, maybe you can, you can talk a little bit about the milestones and, the, and, the, and the, the ways you build this business. Obviously, it's a brand that everybody knows. It's probably the, the most impressive brand building story in, in, in German business history. I don't know about any other brand that's been like a household name in the whole country in as little time. 
Um, what was the, the, the key to that? How, how did you manage to like, get 80 million people to know about the Gorillas brand? What was, was, was it just the product? Did you discover a marketing channel? Was it the amount of money you raised? What was the key to making Gorillas as a brand so big? I mean, I love our brand. And I think we built a good brand, a great brand, I would say. And we need more attention to our brand. And this is what we're going to do over the course of next nine months. Um, so, I mean, we love our brand. As uh, you asked the story, uh, we love our brand. And because it represents our values, it creates our values. Uh, I told you many times, we are authentic people. You know, we, we have tough times staying in our own place and we are own, own selves. And as a company, also, we are like that. Yeah? We cannot stop, really. But I mean, there's people like, from marketing listening. They, they, they want to learn something. They want to like, at least get some like, clues yeah. or ideas yeah. on what exactly. you did. How did you do that? Exactly. I think like, maybe a process how what we went through was this. First, we identified our values. What do we want? How do we want to behave as a cumulative? What, how do we want to feel? So we want to feel bold. We want to feel authentic. We want to constantly ride and have that culture. And we want to really change this. And for, with that base, we thought about, OK, how should we name it? What should be the, num what should be the color? What should be the uh, visuals? And then it created, like, and the second step, it created a, in a PowerPoint, super basic, a couple of ideas. And I think this is, you can come until e here easy. Then you, ha you take hard decisions on the way. What is really a bold marketing campaign? We launched UK with a skydiving campaign. I mean, we skydived to the delivery area. Did it work? It didn't work. It was the most lowest ROI campaign, but we love it because it represents our values. So, but this is one part of it, taking decisions based on values. And second part is what we made a mistake in my point of view lately, and, and this is going to change, by the way, like wait for September, we relaunch it. Uh, we, we talk too much co about competition, yeah? And uh, how are we going to compete? Uh, Getter is doing like extreme discounts. Uh, there's this, like, when you think about competition, you create a notion, you, you get far from yourself. And when you get far from yourself, you get detached from your values a little bit. And you begin doing things that other people do. And this is something we cashed early. Three months we did this. And now we sit together with, with our with our team, yeah? We said, okay, how can we get this values back? We need to go back to our core. What are our three core assets? Customer, brand, and technology. And especially on brand, how can we really spend our resources on brand? So this is more or less like what we do. Maybe before we leave, we talked about like important big topics. Just can you give a very um, brief update on the business itself? I mean, obviously, everybody wants to know, like, how is Gorillas doing? Yeah. Many people are wondering about the business model, and, yeah. and now that, like, the, the economy is, is changing a little bit. Yeah. Give, a, give, a, give an operational update for the moment. What's, what's the status? Yeah, I mean, a couple of key figures maybe in the beginning, and, but the real thing is in the, we need to think about in the context of today. So Gorillas is around $800 million of revenue run rate today. You asked me in the podcast, can it be 100? I told you monthly, that number is coming. So this is one. So we are 60% bigger than our second player in Europe, basically. We are, size-wise, we are the most. But this is not something to be super proud of in the current situation, because nine months ago, we sit with our board, and we said, OK, crash is coming. Yeah? Let's go to efficiency. Nine months ago, we moved to efficiency, and now we have two metropoles generating operating profits, almost. One to one, two months, we generate, we have profitable cities. And as a company, we are by far the most, I mean, in, in European space, we are by far the most efficient company. But does it matter in this today's conditions? Everything will change. So we need to look at the today's context. I mean, last 20, 24 months, federal, federal reserves, they were, buy, they were giving, injecting money in the market. This created high interest rates, high inflation, and created greed, most importantly. Everyone was getting money. Every valuation was super high. And we also benefited from that to, to a certain degree. But now, with what's happening in the market, May, March. March, first time decline. Yeah? So Saigon also said it's like the worst opening of the year. And this is, in my point of view, this is going to continue. Um, 
So what's going to happen is greed will be replaced with reasoning. And reasoning means legit, profitable business. And we're going to, as a company, we are going towards that. And we have a super clear plan on how to do that. Okay, okay. Questions from the, from the bar. Maybe some guys there. I mean, you all know or use gorillas. Coach, do you use gorillas? Of course I do. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, I'm very busy and whenever my wife tells me hey, you need to go grocery shopping I'm coming back to you brother um, want to really thank you and congratulate you on your very inspiring story uh, I felt your energy and this would have been my question because you know how much of that energy and passion do you give away when you are in business talks because that's something that you know I find really hard because I'm coming from sports Uh, I got to start up myself and I'm, you know, I tend to kind of drift away with my emotions and, and, and my enthusiasm. How do you handle that? Yeah. I had a hypnosis session three days ago. So you get into hypnosis session and it's about this question, exactly this question. So first you get under a tree, you hug the tree, that's your inner self. And then there's a path downwards. You go to the path, there are doors. There's a success door, there's this door, there's that door, and the, at the very end, you go, like you're completely, you're, you know, like you're almost half-baked a little bit, you know? So you, you go, and in the, as you get close to that final door, there's the success door, uh, there's the uh, motivation door. So you open the door, you get inside. At that, until there is guided. And then it, he asks you a question, yeah, like, How do you project your motivation and passion to your business or to your life in general? There you begin giving the answers. Yeah? Like what my answers were was relationships. I just said one word, it's relationships. And, and did I do a good job on this? In the beginning, not. In the middle, really good. But now I, will, I looked at my calendar and I said, okay, I told Natalie, Natalie, it's relationships. Like, How can you, so then I s dedicated time on the relationships, like three days through this happening. I'm not that I did this, but I'm going to do this now. But I think if I focus now on the relationships, then I will inject, like distill this to, the, to, the, to my people. Because if I don't do this, I try to solve questions rather than l getting in front of them and giving it. I'm much better than that, but I think Man, Tarantino is coming. Yeah? I'm no, 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 no. <laughs> come on, come on, stay there. <laughs> no, no man, I, yeah, yeah. By the way, I'm pissed. Yeah, first Ashton Kutcher, then P. Break, right, Khan, right, Khan. There. Come on, yeah. come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> I mean, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. So I'm, I'm super appreciative. But, and you also, I mean, the, the motivation. I just see you have you like a gorilla tattooed on your neck. That is new, right? Yeah, that's new, man. Is is that also a motivational thing or? or, or? Yeah, I mean. It, it, it changed me as a person I mean, because of this kind of stuff, you know, like I'm constantly trying to navigate myself through a lot of things that I, I, I haven't seen or experienced before and not so many people also experienced and seen before. So I said, man, I'm, I'm a different person and I, I love tattoos, you know, that's why uh, I said it's time to do gorillas. Did you, did you see, did your investors see that already? Uh, in the zoom it's hard you know like you need to <laughs> you have to show this Where, where's the camera show this i mean la la last question maybe either from the bar or from myself does anybody have a question there Tarek Götz no no Tarek Götz you are facing a lot of competition is my feeling when i'm seeing the drivers driving around what makes you so clear and sure that you will be winning is it a winner takes it all game or is there space for a lot of them yeah, yeah. so First of all, I mean, look at, if you forget Q-commerce, there's Reve, there's Aldi, there's Edeka, there's this and that. So the market is huge, and that's what I try to say. If, if it's, we trapped into this question and we thought so, too much about the competition, and Gorillas' initial success was the fact that we were extremely grounded in, in what we do, and we, we did things quite differently. So now, There's a natural selection happening. There were 30 players. Everyone was big. Everyone was getting access to capital. Some player got the scale, some getting consolidated. And now there's like more or less three, four players are, you know, like are prominent. 
What I believe is, if you think about the product, a uh, product will also change. Now we see pharmacy. We're going to see bigger basket deliveries. We're going to see smaller basket deliveries, and the product will change a lot. And there will be multiple players that are owning one part of the product. In my point of view, I might be wrong, and um, and especially this corner. Think about dot com. Yeah, 2000. There's only Amazon and eBay is remaining from there, but there were like bunch of other players. So of course, in the long run, there's a big corner coming now, and. After this corner, I believe if there's going to be survival of the quickest, and I think there's going to be one or two player that will be prominent uh, in 12 to 24 months from now. But I might be completely wrong. That's why we just focus on what we do the best and execute. Okay, Khan, Khan, Khan. I mean, you're very welcome to stay here at the bar if you like to. I also want to like keep the, con the discussion going in our next podcast. Hopefully, at some point down yeah. the road, we'll do another podcast. Yeah. Um, and I, and are you, you going to stay? Are you going to stay for Tarantino? Yeah. I need to ask because I have a train to uh, Berlin. Okay, I, 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 just, I just didn't want to be rude. I mean, yeah, you know what I, you know, I want to stay, but I mistakenly took my girlfriend's key also. <laughs> and she's gonna be, I need to call her, and then if I would love to stay, actually. Oh, all right, all right. I, I just want to make sure that you don't feel, feel kicked out of, sta of the stage. I, I totally don't mean to do that. Yeah. And I, I mean to have you here. I mean to like, keep the discussion going. Thank you very much for coming here. Thank yeah. you. It's amazing. Uh, and thank you very much for listening. Yeah? Thank you, man. Thank you.